Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to learn B2B in Oracle Integration Cloud. I am here in Oracle documentation for B2B in Oracle Integration. I will provide the link in description. Kindly check out the link. On the left side, there is a table of content. There is a preface given over here. You can go through this preface. I am going directly to introduction to B2B for Oracle Integration. Click on this business to business e-commerce. In B2B e-commerce, an enterprise extends uh, its business processes to reach to its trading partners via a standard protocol that is for the unified business process and for end-to-end -end tracking and visibility and auditing. We will learn in detail what this unified business process platform is. There are a lot of standards available in which an enterprise can communicate with the trading partners for sending the purchase order invoice acknowledgement shipping details so that the enterprise doesn't have to have the custom integrations built to read the invoices or purchase order details for each and every trading partner trading partners could be onboarded into the b2b platform and they can interchange the data over the standard uh, documents of EDI formats and the versions available. Coming to electronic data interchange, there are a set of data formats which are used to exchange a formal business documents between the companies here the enterprise and the trading partners okay currently oracle integration cloud uh, supports uh, edi x12 format which is gone by ansi and the un uh, edifact here there is an example provided by oracle uh, this is for the 850 purchase order uh, if you see it over here there is this details like the trading partner detail it is recognized by the interchange ids and the qualifiers so we'll learn what are those and there are some uh, uh, group identifiers and the qualifiers available and there is this uh, details for the i850 purchase order in edi there is this currency details there is this uh, document version control number there is this address provided in a uh, segment n1 to n4 uh, purchase order details po01 uh, pid and the uh, terminating segment st and there is this UN uh, ID fact format as well. Uh, coming to what is B2B for Oracle integration, as I told, this is to manage the trading partner uh, with the UI based interface. An EDI schema is available that is to customize the standard EDI uh, uh, X12 uh, uh, documents or uh, any other uh, standard documents which are currently supported by Oracle integration. Even we can uh, track the uh, B2B transactions with the help of uh, identifiers. We'll learn how we can uh, uh, track with the help of monitoring in Oracle integration and also we, how we can associate uh, three business identifiers uh, with each transaction. Currently, the adapters that support B2B protocol are uh, uh, AS2 and FTP. Uh, uh, this is most commonly used AS2. We will create one of the integrations to push the uh, EDI file over FTP and uh, we'll also read EDI file coming from trading partner over the FTP. Also, there are action available within your integration that is b2b action uh, you can uh, go to this uh, link and check uh, how you can make use of that uh, b2b uh, action within your integration and uh, generate and uh, read the edi files these are uh, basically used for the standalone mode so as2 and ftp we could use for this uh, trading partner mode uh, we'll learn how we how we can uh, make use of those in our hands-on series there is this protocol currently as i told uh, the oracle integration b2b supports edi x12 and the edifact business protocols and the edi x12 versions are supported from uh, 4010 to 8010 uh, versions and edifact versions from uh, d968 to uh, d20a so there are a bunch of connections which supports b2b currently as2 and ftp or sftp support a trading partner mode uh, but those uh, aq file rest so jms do not support the trading partner mode but uh, they could be used for the standalone mode provisioning the oracle uh, so this will be out of the box available in your enterprise edition so the here there is a table uh, you can just uh, check this uh, against your uh, subscriptions for uh, oracle integration as i told there are uh, two ways to generate the edi document standalone mode or with the help of this trading partner wherein we can load the trading partner or uh, create a trading partner in our uh, oracle integration and uh, make use of as2 or ftp directly to create those adi files and push to the respective trading partner in standalone uh, we make use of this b2b action within our integration and to generate the edi file and then with the help of this b2b we are getting the edi payload then with that payload we can uh, send like, over http protocol or uh, FTP or AS2. Uh, for this, the trading partner definitions are not required for standalone mode. But uh, if you are going for trading partner mode, then uh, we have to create our trading partner definitions in our Oracle integration instance. Then only we'll be allowed to use this trading partner mode. We'll learn in our hands-on. The difference between the two modes are uh, listed over uh, here. Uh, based on the feature, you can go through this. Coming to use of Oracle integration, uh, in detail, we'll look on this uh, in our uh, hands-on series. Here, there is uh, details given uh, over here, like the navigation for uh, setting up this host company trading partners the filling of the primary uh, information contacts uh, when you set up this uh, trading partner uh, 
uh, for the incoming messages uh, the integration will be auto created we'll learn how it is done and also for the outbound messages as well based on the transport protocol uh, what we use uh, those integration auto created we don't have to create an integration for those uh, training partners set up this transport for communication like ftp or as2 for a trading partner or both uh, we'll also learn how to create a schema and uh, b2b document as well uh, coming to management of b2b trading partners this section describes uh, how to define uh, your host profile with the as2 identifier interchange uh, id interchange id qualifier group id group qualifier uh, partner id there are this documentation how to create a trading partner uh, creating the content in case of any error support or a business user wants to reach out to some this trading partner then they, they can come over here and get the details and contact trading partner also we can export and import a trading partner if you are migrating from instance to another that also we can do as i told when we create a transport for a trading partner two integrations will be created one for uh, receiving or inbound transactions and one for sending that is for outbound transactions so we can activate straight from the transport uh, from the trading partner screen those integration we don't have to come to integrations but there is this details given over here how this inbound message processing uh, is done uh, there is this translate edi action this, this is nothing but the b2b action in integration wherein the message is received and it is given to inbound uh, backend integration and it uh, processes the message data and uh, pushes that to our ERP cloud application and any other application whatever we are using uh, similarly for the outbound uh, message processing there is this uh, integration build that is outbound uh, backend integration there is this standalone uh, mode here we don't have to create a trading partner but the details we have to send manually in the mapper uh, while generating the ADI like the interchange ID of the host and the trading partner as you can see we have to make use of this b2b action and we have to build our solution for generating edi file and uh, create uh, this is not auto generated from the uh, b2b uh, ui or the designer uh, this we have to uh, take care of ourselves while designing the integration as an integration uh, developer and also we have to uh, make use of integration uh, monitoring uh, for tracking the b2b transactions provided over here how we can make use of this uh, uh, b2b action in standalone uh, mode this documentation will help you ho how to design the uh, integration i will provide the link in the description you can uh, check out this link uh, how to parse uh, and uh, transform an uh, inbound edi message uh, so it's uh, provided over here b2b documents and schema uh, there is a document editor or a b2b document editor provided uh, in the ui uh, in the oracle integration cloud we can make use of this and we can build a, a custom schemas for the trading partner uh, if required uh, we will learn how we can do that uh, wherein we can uh, you know, modify the elements in the standard document if it is marked as a mandatory we can make it as optional so that at the time of validation it doesn't throw error if some field is uh, marked as optional in the standard and if uh, uh, we want that to be mandatory that also we can uh, change it and also we can go for the conditional uh, requirement as well also we can edit an or clone a b2b document so that we don't uh, uh, invent the wheel again uh, coming to b2b tracking uh, if we have set the a host trading partner then uh, we can track the transactions happening for that trading partner uh, for example for the n997 acknowledgement uh, based on the uh, identifiers we have provided we can track the instances coming to this b2b action xml schema they have provided the elements uh, available uh, in the response of this uh, edi to the b2b action uh, th those are the uh, elements available in the response of this action uh, what each element stands for you can uh, go through this link and you can know the details and coming to the standards and the references uh, uh, there are a few standards currently supported uh, are adi x12 and uh, edifact in oic currently at the time of recording this uh, video so uh, there is this integration uh, interchange control header uh, group header and there is this transaction details and the segment details if you are for the purchase order then uh, we can have those details over here and we, we can have a uh, multiple things clubbed in the same document uh, group fields uh, it's uh, mentioned over here this functional id code sender code all these things we'll uh, learn in detail in our next video we'll learn uh, how to create a, a custom b2b schema or create a b2b document please join us in that video